，大家好，我是来自美国的 Benjamin， 我在青藏高原生活九年了，大家跟我们一起去冒险吧。Hi, this is Ben Kovich. I've lived on the Tibetan Plateau for nine years now. I'm an Eagle Scout. I studied environmental science in college, and I've been a guide for about 15 years now. I love to take people out into the wilderness and teach them about how to survive in the wilderness. And so today, we are at Qinghai Lake. This is China's largest lake. It's a salt lake, just like you might find in Salt Lake City, Utah. And as you can imagine, since we're at 3,200 meters or 10,000 feet. This is totally barren here. There's no trees. This is a great place to explore how to survive in the winter and in the wilderness. Hey, this is Ben Cubbage. We're out here by Qinghai Lake, China's largest lake, and、uh, we're here at 3,200 meters. And we're going to learn how to live and cook like a Tibetan in Tibetan style, using only Tibetan methods. Tibetans use this yak dung for.、Uh, Boiling water and heating their homes, and we're actually going to learn how to do this tonight. So we're going to spend a night right here, and we're going to learn how to survive in the cold on the Tibetan Plateau. Ooh, it is chilly. The whole lake will freeze over in January, in just about a month. You can see we're actually standing on ice here, and it is cold. Woo! The sun is going down. It is winter. It's just a few days before Christmas, and we're at China's largest salt lake, 3,200 meters or 10,000 feet. Okay, so we're out here on the Tibetan Plateau. Tibetans are probably one of the last living nomadic cultures in the world, and、uh, that makes them very interesting. So, what they'll do is every month they'll move to a new grassland or pasture to give their herd of yaks or their sheep new grass to graze on. And a lot of times, while they're in that pasture, they'll take their their yaks out into the high high grasslands in the mountains to find new grass. And this is the type of place that that Tibetans would be grazing. Their their yaks in the summer and sometimes even in the winter. While they're out here, they often go out for several days and they don't return back to their tents. So they take everything with them. They put it on a horse. They put a pot on their horse. They bring a little sampa. They they get the the water from the river and then they just use the, the yak dung that they find in the land. And this is how they make their fire. In fact, right here,、uh, we've see, we can see several other fires just like this with stones, just like this. And it's pretty obvious that other Tibetans have camped here before, using these very same methods. So we're using the the very methods that Tibetans are using when they're out herding their yaks. If they're gone two, three, four days away from their tents, they try to get further and further away from their tents so they have more exposure to better grass and newer, fresher areas. Chicken. Good morning.、Oh. <laughs> morning. Hello. Morning.、Oh. You're all wrapped up like a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. It is nine o'clock in the morning, and we are still in our tent. We're still very cold, and、uh, we've actually been in this tent for twelve hours.、So、we. We got in the tent nine o'clock last night after we ate a quick dinner of sampa, and we've been in the tent twelve hours now.、Uh, we probably only slept four to six hours of that time、uh, because it was so cold and pretty uncomfortable last night.、Uh, 
Um, as you can imagine, uh, we're really close to the winter solstice. We're, we're very close to the shortest day of the year, December 21st. It's already December 14th, so we're experiencing very little sunlight during the day. So the sun comes up very late in the morning and goes down very early in the afternoon. So, which is why our videos were mostly dark last night. But my pad popped in the night and I had to re-blow it up. I, inevitably, I did have to get up and pee in the night, even though I tried to avoid it as long as possible. And uh, it was very cold out there, but it was clear and beautiful and the moon was perfect and bright. So uh, we're gonna get up and uh, we're happy the sun is coming out. It should be coming over the ridge in just a few minutes. And uh, we're excited to get a little bit warmer from the rays of the sun. All right, we're packing up. I'm gonna get out of the tent and see how light it is out there. Ooh. Woo! Good morning! It is a cold morning. The wind is blowing, but at least the sun is coming over the ridge. Over there, sun should be here in about 10 or 15 minutes. Here's where we slept in this tent. So in the middle of the night, my pad actually deflated and I was laying down basically on an almost totally cold ground. It was so cold. I had to get up in the middle of the night and blow it up. It still popped and deflated again. So the nice thing about pad, inflatable pads is they're warmer and they're more comfortable. The bad thing is, is when they pop, you don't really have a pad. So I was basically sleeping on the cold ground all night. So overall, it was a pretty good night. We were warm enough. Um, we probably only slept maybe six, four to six hours the whole night, but we were warm enough. We were okay. We were never in any danger. Uh, another bad thing about camping in the cold, here you can see these stakes. <laughs> we tried pounding these stakes into the ground with this rock and they just bent totally. The ground is frozen solid here. So that's another thing for knowing about winter camping is that when you're camping in the winter, it's maybe very hard to get the stakes in the ground. We got enough wood now, I think. You can see we got, got a few kind of different varieties of wood. Anything from this small here uh, to this small and up through a little bit bigger than a pencil. So all this was just kind of dead wood that's lying around here. Uh, these are about the biggest trees that you get in all of Tibet. And the shrubs here grow about that tall. So that's about all we're working with. We, we don't get much bigger than that. So. Uh, once we start to burn through that, we'll, uh, we'll add the yak dung and that'll start to make a really nice hot fire. We'll burn the yak dung down to some coals and then we'll, we'll put our stove on. Okay, so it's morning and uh, we've gathered some more sticks here. You can see our fire from last night. The yak dung burned pretty well into some ash. That's pretty good. So we were able to boil our water over it. Of course, it was dark last night, so you probably could, didn't see very well. So this, these are the kind of sticks we're working with. Uh, traditionally, these are actually really great fire starters. They're really small shrubs, uh, but Tibetans will bunch these up in a big, in a big bunch, real tight, and then they'll actually use this as their fire starter. You can see how it's small enough down here at the tips on the branches to actually light something like that. So that's what we used last night to start our fire, uh, along with a little bit of dry grass as well. So we're gonna get our fire going this morning, and we're gonna start this up. Start this up use our rocks again and then put our stove on our, in our, our pot and then we're going to boil our water. Once again, it'll, it'll probably take about 20 minutes. So we're going to, just like we did last night, we're going to boil the water again and eat Sampa again this morning. All right, we've been gathering some, some yak dung here. Uh, the advantage of the Tibetan Plateau is that it is very dry. So while it is cold, it's also dry, which means the dung and the, the sticks both light very easily. So you can see this has been dried well. And so we have a nice pile of dung here. 
and uh, we're gonna use that for getting our fire going this morning. So just know while yak dung uh, does work in a pinch, it is very smoky. Last night, uh, you can see in some of the videos, our eyes were really tearing up because there's a lot of smoke. You can see a lot of the content here is actually grass. Of course, that's what yaks are eating and they haven't fully digested all the grass. So essentially, you're basically just burning uh, crumpled up grass. And so, in that way, it produces a lot of smoke. So just know it does burn. Um, it burns enough to create a fire and it sustains a fire, but uh, you are gonna have a lot of smoke and it. it really more smolders than it does actually burn. So make sure once you get your fire lit that uh, you're actually starting with something like small pieces of sticks or cardboard or whatever you have, and then you can move on to lighting the, the yak dung. It wouldn't light immediately, just straight straight from the lighter. All right, we brought some extra water just in case the river water was either dry or frozen, and uh, just an end, or if it was dirty. And uh, we brought this extra water. You can see it is totally ice. So our water is totally frozen over. So uh, yeah, we don't have anything to drink this morning. Um, so remember, if you want to save a bottle or two to drink in the morning, it's recommended you, you put the bottle in your sleeping bag to keep it warm. Otherwise, it's probably going to freeze. So we're going to have to thaw this water out um, using the water we, we cooked last night. We just got down to our car. We walked uh, down to the trailhead here. And uh, of course, we had just been a real cold night. We're ready to get a little bit warm, maybe get some hot real food that's not Sampa. And guess what we just found? <laughs> the car battery is dead. It was so cold last night, it actually drained our battery. So we may either, may either have to buy a new battery or uh, get a friend to come and give us a jump. Fortunately, we're only five or 10 kilometers from uh, some, a few small villages, so uh, we can call some of our local friends and they can give us a jump. So a long night after a cold, uh, being cold in our sleeping bag, and uh, we're still waiting to get out of here. All right, our friends came and gave us a jump. Our car got started, so hopefully we're finally out of here. It's already almost 11 o'clock. A little bit later than we hoped for, but uh, that's okay. Uh, we're thankful to have good friends who came from the middle of nowhere and uh, drove up this gnarly dirt road to, uh, to help us. Fortunately, they had four-wheel drive because I don't think they would have made it without four-wheel drive. There's quite a bit of snow and ice on the road. It's not even really a road. You're basically just driving up the grass and rocks in the mountains. So, great, our car's jumped. We're gonna let it charge a little bit and we're out of here.
seven to the snow and the ice across the barren tundra. And we are leaving our campsite and heading back to civilization. Thanks for joining us on our adventure. Hope you, hopefully you learned something about surviving in the winter. And uh, Guangzhou, woman. Well, man. Sisya. <laughs>